thank you very much for inviting and thank you that you have this interest in me speaking about Lyme disease. You will notice after two slides that I will not speak about Lyme disease. I will speak about the background for the so-called Lyme disease. And <clears throat> well, that's it. I allow myself, time is short, I allow myself to begin. And I also allow myself to make a little bit uh, an explanation what Paracelsus Clinic is in Switzerland, existing since 1958. So it's the <coughs> most traditional clinic in the German-speaking uh, world <coughs> in Middle Europe who does the treatment, the biological treatment and integrates permanently new methods, new techniques and so I would like to say biological medicine is the medicine of the future. It is a very uh, advanced modern technology. It's not just giving some plants or giving some homeopathic remedies or doing a little bit acupuncture. No, it is really a deep going medicine which <coughs> treats chronic, unclear cancer diseases, other diseases. So we really have uh, a lot of patients. Now, this is the part of the, of the campus. We, it's quite big. We have many buildings on our campus. Well, campus is, we don't have a, a camp for, for students and for doctors. No, it is an outpatient clinic, but we also have our own hotel which I will speak, and this is the view out of our hotel to the beautiful Swiss mountains. So it is in the pre-Alps of Switzerland, in an <coughs> absolutely biological environment, and uh, really very beautiful. It's the first and largest clinic since 1908. Myself, I lead, the, I'm, I had the opportunity uh, to get the leading doctor in 19. 92, so it is now 22 years that I do the <coughs> I lead this clinic. We have now 10 doctors, a staff of around 95 uh, persons, and we treat per day around 300 patients. So it's really a big uh, enterprise, and we have uh, permanently, and this would be interesting for you, 18 to 30 so-called inpatients whom we treat in our own little hotel. It was a need after several years that <coughs> my wife and myself, we, we had to build up a hotel. We, uh, we did this ourselves and just to integrate the diet, the instruction, the teaching of the people when they come to us because we expect that the patients learn in two to three weeks how to really change their inner milieu, their inner environment, so that the healing forces they get upbuilt again. <coughs> we, since uh, beginning in April, we will an have another hotel, which is very high level, prestige kind of hotel. It's a spa hotel called Oberweid. It's a five star hotel, which gives us also approach to a very uh, nice environment. Not that this one would not be nice, it's small, it's very personal, and here it is strict. There is no discussion that you get the correct diet which is individualized on you, and either you take it or you go home. So, <coughs> because this is very important, I learned in my career now, I really learned that you have to be strict and you have to be persistent and only s this is the way how you can really upbuild your immune system and uh, just in Lyme disease or in other chronic infections, this is the most important. So this <coughs> is the hotel, this is my picture and we call it Dr. Rao's way, the way how we, we practice. It is all described in my book. I see it here that <coughs> this is, so to say, my book, which, uh, co can I take it? Sure. Only for a moment. Yeah, only for a moment. This is my book who describes the basics, and the other one, the Swiss, so-called Swiss secret, is a simple book, 
which explains the diet, how you can change yourself, your inner milieu. We always speak about the inner milieu, the metabolic condition which the body has and which allows regulation, which allows healing, which allows activity to work out some bugs, some bacteria, some viruses, some loads. Normally a patient does regulate, we call this regulation, does regulate the loads, the bacteria, does activate the immune system, does activate the detoxification system, and so the body keeps healthy. And <coughs> now this, this is why I say so-called Lyme disease, because the background that this bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi, which cause, so to say, the Lyme disease, very mechanistic, understanding that the bacteria should cause the disease. No, the disease is caused because the body can no more work against this more or less harmless bacteria. This is the problem and this is the way how we work on it. I'm <coughs> well, I was praised as the big doctor. No, what is really important is my staff, which I see here, I show here 10 doctors who are super strict, super dedicated. We do the same thing. This is, so to say, the most important that we all do exactly the same treatment. Now, we not only have, <coughs> have uh, many patients, we have around 150 patients per year from the United States. Honestly, this is so sad. Of course, we are happy that you have this medical system here because this makes us good business. But in a way, it's so sad, the most adventurous, uh, the, the most uh, the developed state in the world has a system of medicine which does not really allow deep going biological medicine. And this is why, fortunately for us, unfortunately for you, 150 patients come for inpatient stays in our clinic per year. And we do not have just the ones who go skiing, no. We really have extremely sick patients who come to us and just need another, a different approach to their disease. <coughs> the largest group is US, the second largest is Germany from other countries, but we had patients from 82 countries in the world coming to us in the last years. So it was a need that we built up, Paracelsus International, the CEO, my dear friend Victor is <coughs> with us now, he is the CEO and he coordinates the business worldwide. And we just were in, in China where there is a big, big, big demand for what we do. Now, <coughs> I do not only speak about Lyme disease, because Lyme disease is only one expression of a deep going disturbance of the human body. And we treat this disturbance of the human body and we never treat against the Lyme bacteria. This is the big difference. <coughs> and we also teach this. We have an international teaching system, which is Paracelsus Academy of Biological Medicine, where we do in German and in English, we do now a uh, curriculum, which even ends in a certificate, so to say a master degree of biological medicine. What are the most important causes for chronic disease? It is not the bacteria, it's not the virus, no. There are three things which we nearly find always. And if we insist on changing these milieu backgrounds for the chronic disease, it already gets much better. First is heavy metal intoxication or toxic problem of heavy metals, which we see in all these 100 patients who come from the United States. It's really severe. They have toxic load. More and more, we are the only clinic which can diagnose not only for 
mercury or lead or arsenic, which is very frequent, but also for organic toxins like phenols, biphosphonates, such things which, were, which work in the body like xenohormones from plastics, but also from medication, which change their chemistry in the body under the metabolic situation of the body and under the toxic heavy metal load, they change their chemistry and become much more toxic than what is described in the brochure of the remedy. So within the milieu in which you take a medication, for example, the antiviral remedies, who can be severely anticellular, and this is only one example, because <coughs> viruses, they are gene substances, RNA, DNA substances, the antiviral remedies, they work on the structure of DNA or RNA, and when you take them into the body, where do you have your RNA and DNA in your own cells, and together with heavy metals, they can change and they can attack your own cells. Just today, I had a patient who was <coughs> really suffering from quite severe, disease, uh, severe symptoms called Lyme disease. But when I saw what the background was, what his or her, <coughs> I don't know, I don't say who it is, but her or his uh, findings were, we found extremely high levels of heavy metals. Where do I have this from? I don't know, but they were measurable. And he is since months on antiviral remedies, since years on antibiotics repeatedly. And this changed your, his inner milieu so much that he hardly can get out of his disease, so-called borreliosis anymore. Therefore, <coughs> we look for this. We, we test it, and we not only test the heavy metal find, uh, findings, if you have high heavy metal or high toxic metals. No, we also test genetically if you have. I told you biological medicine is ahead the devel development. It's really a pioneer medicine. It's super modern, modern medicine, because we integrate tests which not even orthodox medicine integrates. For example, genetic testing, if you, you, you can be able to detoxify. No, they can't. 12% of our American patients who come to us for whatever disease, can be cancer or Lyme or, or rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, which we have so good results in, they, 12%, they have a genetically decreased detoxification capacity. The detox road is closed in their body. So the freeway to Washington is closed. What are you doing? You take the sideways, but the sideways have to be activated because they are jammed too. You have to do other detoxification pathways. You can't expect that this patient gets well if we do not activate the detoxification processes, but we can tell you which road you have to take getting to the detox place. <coughs> you know what I mean. So next is fatty acid and vitamin deficiency. We see this especially in Lyme patients and especially in autoimmune patients. We always see the deficiency in fatty acids. They have too high pro-inflammatory fatty acids like linolenic and arachidonic acid, and they have too little stabilizing, self-stabilizing omega-3 fatty acids. But only taking fish oil doesn't affect, because as long as you have the pro-inflammatory arachidonic and others palmitinic acid, which comes from animal, from heated animal protein and from dairy products, as long as you have them, you can't heal the cells. And the cells are diseased in the Lyme patients, in the autoimmune patients, in whatever kind of chronic patients. So these are the reasons for, hype, uh, for, <coughs> for
for chronic diseases, the metabolic reasons behind. And hyperacidity and hyperproteinization, what this is, would be a two-day seminar itself and how to test. I can't in one speech, 20, uh, one hour, I can't cover all these issues. But you have to see these are the backgrounds why you really get sick or why you can regulate. It, it's everything about the self-healing processes. These are the most frequent co-causes why they get, get sick. <coughs> we teach this in our courses. Now, let us talk about something before I come to, <coughs> to the real Lyme disease. Let us talk about other backgrounds. Did you ever think about why we have now this Lyme disease? Why did we have in the wartime, in especially in Middle Europe, why did we have tuberculosis which disappeared? Why did we have this disease, the other disease, in a certain period in the history? Why did they have in the African countries the pest, which is now no more present? Why do we have, why did they have, in, after the war, why did they have the epidemic virus, the Spanish flu? And it, it killed hundreds of thousands of people, probably million, one, two million, more than <coughs> or nearly as much as the war before it. Why? And now, no more. Because the presence of an epidemic disease is always based on a average milieu of the population. We, do, we have different metabolic pathways and metabolic activities now than we had 50 years ago. Why is Lewis syphilis no more so present? It's not because the, behavior, the sexual behavior is better. No, the sexual behavior is even worse. It should be, have even more Lewis, but it's a disease which is no more around. And the same bacteria, did you know that syphilis and Borrelia has more or less the, exactly the same spirochetes? Why does it express differently? Why did this germ change over the, over the the decades <coughs> because of the average milieu. And I would like to talk a little bit about the average milieu. There are statistical uh, evaluation in the US, in Switzerland, in Germany. They analyze from the health department what is the average intake of the patients. How do they nutrify themselves? Which of course, determines their inner milieu. <coughs> Look at this first. The daily protein intake, 1950, was 45 grams per day. 2010, it was 130 grams per day. The triple average protein intake per day our grandparents, our parents, they ate totally different. And amazingly, the numbers are more or less the same in Switzerland as in US and in Germany, all the Western countries. And then they began, which was really a pioneer work of the countries. Switzerland, of course, ahead all the others. They, they <coughs> tested this already in 1948, they began. But Germany and the US began 1950 around, and they defined the mineral intake, the average trace element intake of the population is, they defined 100%. And they looked permanently every two years in Switzerland, this analysis gets done, very big effort, and they know now it's 22%. Look, what does this mean? We eat one-fourth of, uh, of the minerals and the trace elements, which are so important for the cellular activity, than we did 60 years ago. And we eat three times more protein. This changes the inner milieu significantly, and different germs can grow. 
different metabolic activities come across. And when we look at the patient, where are you staying nowadays? This decreased mineral intake, this decreased trace element intake makes the vitality of the cell lesser because we need a surface potential on our cells which is determined by the trace element content of the whole body. And the same thing is hyperprotein film, hyperproteinization, which just sticks in your interstitial, this means in your tissues, in your, in your connective tissue, in every organ, it just sticks in because we can't metabolize these things. We teach all this in our academy. Now, what is the effect of it? <coughs> the effect of it is that the erythrocytes stick together, that the oxygenation of the tissue gets less because they don't have <coughs> the surface membrane potential anymore, and they stick together. So this makes decreased peripheric organ trans, uh, perfusion this can make diabetes because the, the, the diabetes, the, uh, the pancreas cells, which need a lot of, of oxygenation, they are no more oxygenized the same way. The kidney is under oxygenized, and what does it make? It pushes out, it, it excretes as an alarm sign more renin, and the blood pressure goes up. Therefore, we have such pictures such pictures in the dark field. We do dark field. We take a, blood, a drop of your blood, and we, <coughs> we test this drop under the microscope, and we can see, ho, ho, ho. Congratulations, dear patient, that you are still coming here and don't have so much symptoms. And the fact that you have a hypertension with such a blood, congratulations. You are a regulation athlete to decrease the blood pressure according to the need. Because the kidney, the brain, the adrenal gland, they will alarm because these cells, they no more have enough oxygenation surface. How can they transport the oxygen to your body? And germs which love unoxified milieus like Borrelia, like viruses, or oh, cancer cells. They laugh when they have such situation because they can't take a lot of oxygen. They have a different metabolism and they fermentate. Who they are favored by such a situation. You see, these are only two little reasons why the germ, the germs change. And why we have nowadays all these chronic viral infections, why we have nowadays an infection from a germ which would be in a good milieu, totally harmless, Borrelia burgdorferi, which is absolutely harmless germ if the milieu does not fit to it. And here we have to work. Several years ago, I had a speech like this. I was <coughs> staying at my dear friends, the Baldwins in Massachusetts, and they had a friend, and they had another friend, and so on, friend of friend of friend, and they got the call. Oh, we heard Dr. Rao is here. Can we bring or discuss the case of our girl? I never say no. My wife knows me. I never say no. And that's why, okay, bring her. And they carried the girl who came from New York, the father carried her, 18-year-old girls, and laid her on the, she could no more walk because she didn't have the sensibility anymore in her feet. Then I said, I tried to, to, to talk to her. It was able to talk two, three minutes. And afterwards, a salad of words came out. Then I asked her, can you write on the computer? Can you write your name? And out came a salad of letters. She was no more able to do such 
elementary things have Sever most severely diseased Lyme patient. Diagnostic of Lyme stage 3, neurological Lyme. Having antibiotics for, for months, six weeks every day, rosephine, as an example. Nowadays, they do it even worse. They give triple combination. They add antiviral remedies to the treatment. They add <coughs> antifungal treatment, triple con combination is antibiotics, antifungal, and antiviral remedies. And they even use remedies like rosefin or ciproxine, which both have a stabilizer containing mercury in it. Now, if you have six weeks rosefin, you are highestly in the toxic dimension of getting uh, mercury. And this is what we test day one. This is not a single case. This is a severe case. And she was fully individualized, could no more go to school. Absolutely not because of her neurological problems. We tested toxicity, intestinal flora, protein milieu, trace element content, all these things we tested and we individually changed individualized treatment to change to the normal so that her metabolism began to work against, again. And <coughs> we did not use any pill nor IV with antibiotics. We do not treat Lyme patients with antibiotics because it makes it worse. And <coughs> we treat the milieu and we activate and our Lyme patients, they get killed. She is now, had quit, uh, no, how do you say? Uh, she had degree of university and she's now working. Another, another kind of an, patient, also Lyme stage three, also from New York. This has nothing to do with New York or not in New York, not at all. They just come, it's easy to get to Switzerland from there as it is from Washington, daily direct flights, six hours. So, <coughs> so they came, also another girl, but she was totally nervous, like this hyper, hyper, hypery, and could not concentrate. And for not being able to concentrate, and not even being able to sleep, and everything disturbed her so much that she got in pain. She got anti-pain remedies, more and more and more. She got morphines and got addicted to morphine beside the, the Lyme disease. Here, it took two years to detoxify her. Shortly ago, I had a, a speech in, <coughs> in uh, New York, a public speech about Lyme, and she came in and presented herself. I'm just now coming, sorry that I'm too late because I had to, to stay in the university. We had a special course, and meantime now, she has finalized university, and she works in a very difficult job as a gallerist for art gallery secretary. So, fully healed, fully healed, before fully individualized. And I could show you at least 10 such cases, at least. These are the, the severe ones, but we also have the lighter ones, which are also disturbed, but not so much, but still. And they continue their symptoms and they are continuously treated against Lyme, which is not the cause of the disease. It's only one little expression of the disturbed milieu. <coughs> the infectious diseases nowadays, the so-called bacterial or viral diseases, the infectious diseases, this we have to learn. The school books of the universities, they don't fit anymore to nowadays situation. They were written, let's say, 10, 20 years ago, but the general milieu of the population and the general germ presence, it changed so much. Nowadays, diseases, 
viral diseases, bacterial diseases, they are more chronic. They have undefinable symptoms and always, this is too modest, nearly always different germs which work together. Not only this or that, no, very often they have viruses too. They often make neurological symptoms and they nearly always make psychological agnostic symptoms. So I have to ask, is it really Lyme's disease what you suffer from? My belief is no. Or Lyme's disease has only a little bit to do with the germ Borrelia burgdorferi but it has a lot to do with other things which we find in all the patients. It's about 10 different test methods which we take and then we can say, are you toxic? Are you virally infected or are you both? Or do you have a hyperproteinization? Or what is the real problem on you? And then we work on this real problem and the body gets able <coughs> to work against the so-called cause the Borrelia burgdorferi. But in fact, the body rebuilds its inner milieu by itself. I do not only have the, the, the patients from, from the US. No, we have per day two to 300 patients. And we have a lot of infectious disease patients in our clinic anyhow. Our treatment works. If you come with your Lyme disease, I can nearly guarantee that within several months you feel extremely much better if not healed. I can nearly guarantee. And I can guarantee that we can take you away from, from uh, antibiotics. It is difficult to train out of the body the severe cellular side effects of the former unnecessary toxic medication which you have. For example, the New York girl, which is now a beautiful young lady, she was addicted to morphine, but by the doctors. She's not an addiction type. She's absolutely not an addiction type. So <coughs> it heals from side effects of unnecessary and harmful antibiotics. It makes the patient less successful for infections and it increases the patient's alertness. They lose their neurological symptoms. Of course not, it's not an anti-treatment. No, we stabilize the nerve cells. We give brain food, which are very specific lipids very specific amino acids, but of course we test them individualized before. This makes the treatment a little bit difficult because we have to individualize it very much. But it works on the nerve cells, it works on the brain, it works on the psyche, and they get much better. And all of them went back to work, even though some of them had been for years out of work. No antibiotics and no antiviral remedies. This is really a plague what is given nowadays to the Lyme patients or to the, <coughs> they call it now tick-related diseases. Not only Lyme, it can be Babesia, it can be Bortanella, it can be others too, Chlamydia and so on. But all of them, they just like the milieu in which the patient is. And if you kill the ones, the other one comes. Because I explained to the patient, look at the garden. You have a wonderful lawn, a grass outside. And if this grass is not good, weed comes up. And if you make the grass better, weed disappears. That's a picture which I very often tell to the patients. And the grass we have in our intestines. I will talk to this later. So <coughs> we build up the intestinal and immune system. And we do, you don't have to stay for two years. Well, I would like you to stay for two years, but nobody can, of course. We take the patients for most intensive evaluation, 
This takes several days, but from day one, we begin to treat. Then we build up with two to in two to three weeks the milieu, not up to 100%, but we change the inner milieu up to perhaps, I don't know how many percent, but better than it was before. And the patients, after two to three weeks, they feel a significant change, especially in, her, in their alertness. And afterwards, that's why I, <coughs> I, I'm so thankful that we have clinics like you here in the area or others, wherever it might be, which, or who, with colleagues who know, who came to my seminars and know exactly how to post-treat the patients because it takes two to three years. But after six months, they normally are so much better that it's only peanuts anymore, what they still have of symptoms. But to rebuild the milieu takes one to two years. Permanent treatment, but not much. Just individualized upbuilding. We build up the body cell by cell. This is our slogan. Rebuild your body cell by cell. So that after the rebuilding time, the body is able to work out as it should be in everybody of us to work out bacteria and viruses. And also to work out the <coughs> Borrelia, which is, which is uh, uh, this, the no, not Borrelia, the carrier is, which brings from the depot, which is the deer in the forest. They are the, the, the real depot of the Borrelia but they do not get sick. The tick bites the deer and bites later on a human being, and that's the way how the Borrelia comes to us. That's how big they are, millimeter, not even, and then they get a little bit bigger. They can get up to one centimeter size when they are fully filled with blood, <coughs> the deer ticks. They belong to the family of the spider. Not every tick bite is making an inflammation. No, only 1 to 10 to 1 to 3, 20 tick bites lead to a borreliosis. This means every third tick carries. This was a big study done in Switzerland. Perhaps it changed a little bit, but not every tick is carrying the, the, the borrelia. And but every third is carrying, and still only every 10th to 20th gets diseased. This means all the others, they have an immune system that they can work against. Only a certain selection gets from one third to one tenth. If you have Borreliosis stage one, one to 30 gets stage two. And again, one to 100 gets stage three. This shows, when you calculate 3 times 10 times 30 times 100, this gives uh, about 6,000. 1 to 6,000 gets neurological stage 3 Lyme disease. But the incidence is higher here. Also, this proves that there are other reasons which help to build the so-called picture Lyme disease. And the reasons are different reasons. It's not the bacteria, but the milieu which enables to, to build up the disease. That's why we have to <coughs> build, we have to treat on the inner milieu environment. The varying symptomato symptomatology of the disease picture is an expression of toxins. <coughs> we have in Switzerland, in Europe, other patients who are coming from the US who do not have Borrelia antibodies, and they were not infected, but they have exactly the same expression of disease. They would be, if they would have Lyme's antibodies, they would be called Lyme patients, but they have exactly the same, same issues. But nowadays, a, a patient goes to the normal doctor, they make the test for Lyme borreliosis, they find positive and say, oh, 
it's Borrelia burgdorferi, we have to treat with antibiotics. And if it doesn't work, we have to take another one or two or three or four other ones. And if it does still not work, which is mostly the case, then we have to do a permanent treatment. But they don't look what else could be the cause, which makes exactly the same symptom. It's, <coughs> it's a, always an individual's in metabolic thing. They always have a gravely disrupted gastrointestinal health, always. And perhaps it began after a vaccination, because vaccinations, they contain not only viruses, they also contain preservatives, and they help to fill the barrel of loads. These vaccinations, which contain viral substances, the antiviral uh, vaccinations, only as an example, the flu vaccination, which is absolutely necessary, and they contain preservatives. And these preservatives are, again, metal-containing element, uh, metal-containing solutions. <coughs> the use of antibiotics makes it worse. Therefore, my paradigm, Lyme disease is a toxic disease. It's not a bacterial disease. Of course, you find the antibodies. Numbers parallel to toxic load in water, especially mercury, under a strict detoxification. This should be in red, under a strict detoxification program, and <coughs> the expression of the disease always gets better. Lyme is the syphilis of the modern time, Antibiotics make it worse, and under antibiotics, the Borrelia burgdorferi changes to cyst-building form, which infiltrates the, the tissue with low metabolism. They go as cyst forms to the tissues and can hang around there for a long time. And antibiotics to these kind of tissues not even penetrate correctly. So we really have to change the inner milieu. <coughs> I tested several hundred patients who came with the diagnosis Lyme from all over the world, and they always have severely disbalanced fatty acid and phospholipid profiles. Phospholipids, which stabilize phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, soilacetin, all these substances which stabilize the cells and make the cells less acceptable, accessible for bacteria and for viruses, especially for viruses. They always have this pattern, high linolenic, which is omega-6 fatty acids, and high arachidonic acid, which both are pro-inflammatory nerve cell irritants. They have this profile, and this comes from, from nutrition. This is why in our hotel we are so strict, we show the patient what to eat, and we show the patient what to change. Very often it's not much to change, but they have to do it for several weeks. This is why we are so strict in our clinic hotel, so that they really can change the metabolism within these three weeks, and we can turn the down, downhill curve to the uphill uh, tendency. <coughs> we do virus tests beside this. And we find that it's never only Borrelia which causes the bad symptoms. There is always other loads, mainly viruses co-acting. And these viruses, they are slow reacting viruses nowadays. Cytomegalia, for example, has no more the expression of an acute disease. No, it just hangs around and disturbs the lymphatic system, the lymph cell, disturbs the immune system, and it even can create cancer. The so-called vaccination virus, 
Vaccines contain viruses and they should work long term. This is why they stabilize them with stabilizers so that they work long term. But who tells you that in your disturbed metabolism, these part viruses, these RNS substances with stabilizer, that this molecule does not disturb and make nerve irritation too. That's what we find. Very often, hepatitis B, B, or flu vaccine. Coxsackie, oops, Coxsackie virus, uh, sorry. Coxsackie virus, very often we see. And always, but we test, all opposite to the orthodox doctors, we test for unorganic heavy metals and for organic xenohormones in your body, which also disturb neurologically. So we find such things. <coughs> Why is the prevalence of Lyme in US vastly, vastly greater than in Europe or in far eastern countries? Why do Chinese not nearly not know Lyme disease? It's not an issue there, even though they have other big problems, but Lyme is not an issue there. Why did the medical association of Australia, a, a country, for example, uh, Brisbane or Perth or Sydney, they are towns comparable with the big towns in Europe. Why did the medical association say Lyme disease is not caused by, it does not exist? What we call, it's not me who says it or some bio, bio dreamers. No. It is, <coughs> it is the medical association which several, who several months ago told Lyme disease does not exist. The real reasons are others. For this picture, which is a neurological picture, immunological picture, which has other reasons. Very interesting. And these towns are comparable with us. Interestingly, Borrelia tests positive. They did a very, in, in, uh, very uh, interesting test. <coughs> when you look at the area Lyme, where the forests are, where the, the, the little lakes are, it's more or less a, a mixture between middle and cold climate, a lot of forests, a lot of deer. We have in Europe an area which is more or less identical along the river Rhine in the Black Forest, in the Swiss part, but mainly in the, in the forests of the Black Forest, which goes along the river Rhine. <coughs> they did a test. They tested farmers, woodworkers, children in schools in these villages out in the, uh, in the countryside. They tested these people. And they found in more than 90% of these absolutely healthy individuals, they found exactly the criteria which you would use here as an argument for giving antibiotics, which is either IgG elevated or Western blot test or the genetical test, they did Western blot and they found it positive in all patients. So, but they were as healthy as can be. You see, perhaps the Australians are right. The positive test which leads to a treatment here and also in Germany, even in Switzerland they do this, is not relevant for the real cause what you had, because you test positive also when you once had a contact to this, this germ and worked it out very well. <coughs> now, there is another study which I learned of about 
about seven, six years when I had the big chance to talk on Pioneers, this Congress for Environmental uh, Things, in which takes place in the Boston area every year. They have this fascinating Congress every year about healthy farming, about the environment, about water, about uh, electrical plants, and so on and so on. And I was invited to speak not about the environment, and not, uh, uh, situation, but the inner environment situation. This is why I, I was invited, or honestly, I invited myself. But <coughs> so, another co speaker who had no idea of what I told, tell, he said <coughs> there is an increase, a uh, massive increase in numbers, and he showed here. Look, here is this li little town, Lyme. Fisher's Island, Rhode Island, Providence, and so on and so on. Here is Marion, uh, where we have the Marion Institute, which you hopefully support a little bit financially, so that it, it's a foundation, so that it can work. And this speaker came and said, look, we tested Philadelphia, New York, Rhode Island, Boston, Maine. Uh, Portland, Maine. We tested in these towns and environments around these uh, towns, we tested groundwater because we were interested with what are the deer which are the depot of the Borrelia are confronted. And they tested at this time, nowadays they would test other things too, but they tested only mercury in the water. And what did they find? And he made a relation to the incidence. He looked in these towns, how is the incident of Lyme di diagnosis? And he found these parallels. Philadelphia, less. Up, up, up. The highest concentration of mercury in water <coughs> was here. And the incidence of cases per 100,000 per year was this. Absolutely parallel incidence between heavy metal load in the groundwater and incidence of cases. I can't comment. I'm not a scientific person, but I just have to show this to you. Perhaps we have to think a little bit away from the bacteria towards the fact that there is a toxic load, towards the effect that we, including myself, even though I come to Switzerland, but you, unfortunately, much more, are confronted with severest toxic load, which the body one day can't process anymore. The barrel is full, and then you get sick. The barrel which fill, the barrel of load is full and one day it oversweeps and then is when you get sick. <coughs> the bacteria, we go through this, we don't go through this because you can read it in the, on, the, on the internet what Borrelia burgdorferi is. It's only known since 1977. Of course a Swiss man who found this bacteria, <coughs> a scientific uh, researcher from Switzerland. So <coughs> he found this. And in 19, 1983, there is a correlation found. This is a disease with, which only exists since 30 years. Or it is known that there is a correlation. But the pharmaceutical companies or whoever might have been behind, they made out of the correlation the fact, or they say, it is the cause. Correlation is not cause. This is my understanding. <coughs> it has several phases. This is out from a book, several phases. And it makes neurological symptoms, but rarely. We find what we do 
borreliosis, IgG and IgM tests. We find Western blot. We do lymphotropic and neurotropic viruses. We test, and we test with the DMPS challenge test. We test heavy metals. But also, this has to be added here, we test for xenohormones and organic toxins. The organic toxins from sprays, from colorants, from, from preservatives, from plastic bottles, from, 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 from. Many different sources. The barrel fills very slowly, but once it is full. And we have then to remove the load very individualized out of this so-called barrel. We do dark field where we see that the regulation capacity is no more uh, <coughs> present. Nowadays, we have other diseases, the so-called cell wall deficient bacteria, the cell walls of which by antibiotics, by other influences, they are no more successful for antibiotics. This is why they no more react and they only get into their chronic form. And when we look, we have a test which is unique. <coughs> this lab, we can test cell wall deficient bacteria, these part antibodies against bacteria. And this is so typical a profile which we see here for a Lyme patient. Typical profile for cell wall deficient bacteria, Pseudomonas and Klebsiella, part antibodies. They do not really react correctly. Well, this is an old test. Now they also test Portanella, cell wall deficient form, which can make neurological disease also. So it's always a combination which we find, but they don't, unfortunately, react to antibiotics. So you can read either in our web page or you can read in my book, in the Sicker book, you can read about the three-phase program <coughs> for healing chronic diseases. Detoxification, but really consistent, and detoxification from heavy metals needs one to two years. And we have to test if you can detoxify. If you can't because the glutathione transferase gene lacks or the epoxide hydrolyse or the cytochrome gene, we test all these genes. If they lack, we have to do another detoxification on you. We individualize. Next, intestinal health. Did you know that the intestines are the site of the immune system? Did you know that the bifidus bacteroides and lactophilus bacteria, they are the detoxifier because they absorb toxins? When we look at Lyme patients, especially at patients who were treated with antibiotics, they have a destroyed intestinal flora, even if they get the antibiotics intravenously. No, it destroys the, the, the system, and the detoxification system intestines no more works. So they only get higher in toxins, and you create chronic patients, which, of course, is good for the doctors. Regeneration, you have to regenerate the the body, you have to regenerate the cells which are severely disturbed. And regenerative treatment, it's not just anti-aging giving some hormones. No, it goes much deeper. We have to supply the trace element. We have to supply the essential, uh, es essential fatty acids. We have to supply the essential amino acids according to what we find that it is lacking. So, this is the, the treatment program. We increase the immune system by healing the intestines, increase the upbuilding and regeneration forces with nutrition and supplements, and we tell the patients exactly what to eat and how to eat, and we supply for several weeks, we supply the elements and the amino acids which they need. 
the bacteria are not the cause, but expression of the problem. So this is the barrel of which I spoke. It takes years and years and years until we are up here. But it's no use to keep a cup and to work against the symptoms, because next time the patient shakes a little bit, it overflows here. No, we take the big Swiss Paracelsus drill and we drill a hole here so that the level comes down. And drill here means detoxification, alkalinization, deacidification. We look for geopathic load, electromagnetic load. We look for mineral deficiencies and so on. This is our treatment. And again, we come to the beginning. These are the causes which make sick. It's not the Borrelia bacteria. How do we detoxify daily, when they, when they are with us? Daily detoxification infusions, alkaline infusions, because normally they are severely hyperacidic. Hyperacid. We supply zinc and selenium, vitamin C, which we also give IV, and to see that we do not overdose, we control DHEA, because if you overdose vitamin C, DHEA begins to increase. We give algaes, green algaes, for example, chlorella or other remedies, and alpha-lipoic acid, which we give as a basis to the patients. Heavy metal and other toxins allow wrong pathogenic bacteria to grow. Then we do ozone treatment. Ozone therapy is the strongest metabolic activator. Unfortunately, in the United States, it's forbidden in, in many states, ozone treatment. We do this. <coughs> we we uh, supply ozone to the blood. We ozonate the blood, which we take out. Ozonate, take in. It's an absolutely undangerous method, and it increases the immune system. It's really the stimulator for the immune system. And we add some remedies, which are antibacterially working. Biological remedies. We never use antibiotics, because antibiotics are, you know what bios is? The life. Anti. Bios is against the life. Search of no thoughts, a uh, search of viruses, and then we, we provide specific antiviral biological. These are homeopathic, the no thoughts are homeopathic remedies which give the information of the virus so that the lymph cells begin to act against. <coughs> no thought drops activate the white blood cells specifically against the virus or the bacteria against which we want to them to work. So it is activation of the immune system. The oral treatment, this is more for doctors, we can jump over. And then we also see that the intestinal mucous membranes, which are the biggest organ in human being, they have very fast regeneration time. They are carrier of the life forces. That's why the nutrition is so important and the healthy bacteria. They, have, they produce hormones and neurotransmitters. If your intestinal membranes, and especially the intestinal bacteria, are destroyed, which we find in all these patients, then you have less neurotransmitters. You have less endorphins. And endorphins work against the pain. That's why these patients, they become more and more pain syndromes, these so-called Lyme patients because they have a decreased, we can test GABA, gamma amino acid, we can test serotonin, we can test adrenaline, noradrenaline, we test histamine, and we found chaos poor normally. So as a, as a 
as an effect of the intestines which are diseased. They are the home of parasympathetic system, the intestines, and they are the source of the upbuilding forces of the T cells. You see, in the intestinal membranes and bacteria, we have a lot of explanations where we can, or which way we can go. <coughs> These patients, they need a pro-treatment and not an anti-treatment. We rebuild this, the body cell by cell by giving a pro-treatment for their upbuilding forces. The main destroyers of the intestines, we find this in 90% of these neurological patients, food allergy. We find preservatives, phosphates, we can test the, the, the body for phosphates, for preservatives in the drinks, in, in many substances. We have these substances which, which are stabilizers for taste, for example, in the sweet drinks. I don't name, name them. You know what I mean. All these sweet drinks which people like, and it's absolutely not about the zero form or the glue. The, the sugar containing form. No, it is about the, the taste preservatives which they have in. This is the neurotoxic uh, side of it. Th this is why we forbid all these artificial drinks totally to our patients. They have to learn this. And no sugar. And sulfur in meat, especially in pig meat. Alcohol makes it worse. It's not the cause, but it makes it worse. Food allergies, they destroy the mu intestinal mucous membranes, and they make this, what I saw here, all gets decreased, which is the immune system. They lower the intestinal secretorial IgA. According to the surface of the intestines, the antiviral antibodies are good or bad in the body secretorial IgA, you can make a comprehensive stool analysis, which we do day one of when the patient comes, comprehensive stool analysis, and we find secretorial IgA is directly proportion, proportional to the, <coughs> to the, to the uh, health of the intestines. Now, what are they allergic to? I'm I had the chance in my life to come to the United States since, my, since I was a student. And really, I, I love to be here. I'm extremely thankful that I may be a guest in this beautiful country, which changed a lot in the last 30 years. But this is experience of my life. And I am fan of some, for example, fan of this man. Why? <coughs> because I realized much later when I was a doctor already, he had a very simple method, a very American method. He only acted with the very heavy, heavy boys. You know, he was sent to, to, the, to the robbers and the murderers, and so nobody was successful. Full. And he had a very simple method. He shot out of the hip, puff, puff, and these heavy cases, they fell down. Now, poor Dr. Rao, I have from all over the world, I have the heavy cases. They come to me. Nobody was successful. What should I do now? Well, it's simple. I have my idol here. <laughs> puff, puff, and they fall down. But the disease falls down and the patient feels better. First shot is no dairy. Second shot is no wheat products and no sugar. This is the nutritional approach. Of course, it's a little bit more detailed, much more detailed. But it is written exactly described in this book which, if you want, I can sign outside. So this is <coughs> what is behind. Of course, it's a lot simplified here. 
but I just wanted to give you this n gram. And you hit 90% of the immune weak, not the Lyme patients, the immune weak patients. This is what we do more. We jump over this. We have specific amino acid powders, which are super organic, which contain more than 90 different trace elements. It's tested by a, a neutral lab, Evelisa. It's available here. Go to the internet. Puerto Rico has a, it's a, in Puerto Rico is a, a the representative for the United States. You can have it sent from New York. They send it. It's an extremely good product. And <coughs> what is the, well, how do we increase the liver strength? Liver strength means the rebuilding forces. When I speak about liver yin, it's not the liver as organ. No, it is the rebuilding forces in the body. It's, it's a little bit philosophical, this, this Chinese medicine expression. This is what we give <coughs> to our patients. You see, diet, again, little animal protein, absolutely no, no dairy products. Then milk thistle, vitamin B, essential amino acids, which are in this thing, and absinthium, which is wormwood and warm packs, and never drink cold drinks because it decreases your liver forces, your vi vital forces. No ice in the drinks, no chlorine water, because all this suppresses the life forces in your body and makes you chronically sick. Why? is chlorine put into the water? What is the real background? I'm not from here. You can think about it yourself. Omega-3 fatty acids. And we have in our clinic, we provide the life cells. They are called stem cells here, but it's, it is not stem cells. It's life cell extracts, which we produ pre produce ourselves, highest quality and we provide to our patients. But let us forget about this because you can't get it here. You can only get it for a patient who was in Switzerland. This is <coughs> the Swiss secret, very simple. It's a John Wayne book, so to say. How to detox in one week, how the three weeks cure to change your metabolism. You can do all this at home. You're very welcome to come to Switzerland, but it's not needed. You can do it according to the book and the main time maintenance diet. This is what you can read in my book. And I thank you very, very much for your, present, uh, for your coming here. Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to speak here.